all businesses uh, have a start with a futuristic mindset. So we would love to know what are the future plans of your organization. So I think it's. Uh, uh, I I come actually from a very small organization. This is called uh, Rubicon Learning System Private Limited. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, we specialize in the area of uh, leadership development, executive coaching, designing interventions for organizations, uh, and a little bit of business simulations. Okay, sir. Partly HR consulting. Mm -hmm. So we are a small boutique company and uh, we do some niche work. So we don't have large offices or setups all over the country. But the range of assignments do is fantastic. Yes, of course, it, it doesn't matter what the size of the company is. It yeah, what it matters is the value by, you by, create. By design, it's a small company. So it's not a default, but by design, it's a small company. Uh, some of the futuristic trends which are happening in our part of the business is that uh, more and more organizations are looking at uh, options of virtual delivery of training programs, distance yes. learning. Yes. Uh, people can do some work online, some work offline. This suddenly cuts the delivery costs. Yes. So we are working with a large Indian group. We are designing an intervention for them which will cover 10,000 managers. That's great, sir. Now imagine bringing those 10,000 managers into a classroom for a one day or a two day training, particularly when they're not co-located. You can imagine the complexity of yes, sir, such, yes. such an effort. Yes, sir. And as organizations are becoming bigger and bigger, a lot of technology initiatives <coughs> are being looked at as part of learning and development solutions. This is a major trend I think which will continue from here onwards. And one of the things you can also expect is that uh, organizations and individuals will demand desktop learning. Okay, yes. So I'm sitting in my office, I'm sitting on my desktop, on demand, I should be able to pull out a course which will satisfy mm -hmm. my needs. Yes, yes, online. Now, this is happening. This is happening. Uh, organizations like Coursera, uh, yes, most of yes, the Western sir. universities yes. uh, uh, are offering uh, distance learning programs and self directed learning programs. But that trend is going to be more and more, and organizations will end up sponsoring such efforts yes, because sir. of the large challenges. So, um, MBA students, we are all striving to become great leaders. What is that one quality that you look for in a leader? That you think is important in a leader? Uh, I think uh, the more and more we see, uh, I don't want to sound negative, but the more and more divergences we see in terms of gaps between what people say and what people do, uh, whether it's in political system or it's in national, partly society in large, yes, I mean yes. there is a lot of difference. So one of the things MBA students should probably, and I'm sure they are, but more and more, uh, get in touch with what do they stand for. What are their value systems? Values are and, important. And if I am centered on my values, which have a reasonable positive angle to those, I can have values which are totally negative. Yes, that's possible. Yes. But values which have overall uh, reasonably positive sense to that, and if I lead my life according to those values, I am at peace with myself. I can be more effective in interpersonal situations. I can be 
candid with people because I operate from honesty and sincerity. I can be assertive. Assertive is not a negative word in my mind, it's a positive word. Yeah, there's a difference between assertive and aggression. aggression. Yes, we learn about that. So I think very early. And another aspect a young students should keep in mind is that uh, uh, the real life is uh, not that hypothetical sometimes which can happen in classrooms. So I pass out and I want to change the world and I've seen some startups and they've done extremely well. I don't see 98% of the startups who have failed. <laughs> so, you know, it's okay to dream, but then vision has to be backed with thought through actions. An organization don't work at the pace young millennials would expect them to work. Young millennials are used to ordering on Amazon and home delivery and food stuff, this is stuff. Everything has to be quick. They just press the button and it happens. Yeah. But to even think of a small change in organization, there is an existing system and you want to modify that system, it doesn't happen with press of a button. So they must understand. Uh, and, and I received recently an app which I'm sure is quite in the social media difference between intelligence and wisdom. Okay. So there is a lot of intelligence which our educational system provides. Unfortunately, the education system in India is uh, all academic. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And the children from lower middle class, upper middle class families, they don't have to work for their education. Either their parents support their parents. them or there are easier loans available, yes. they don't have to work. Many other countries, people when they are enhancing their education, they have to work part-time, full-time, then take a break in their working Cultural career defenses, sir. And, then, and then come for a class. Yes. Now, the ability to relate to concept, management, leadership, having worked before, having drawn their experiences, it's very different from coming from a straight academic background. So, I have a question regarding that. Uh, there are a lot of MBA students who do not have work experience. So, what do you think they should do to up their value when they're competing against so many people that have uh, you know, work experience and sitting in the same place? I mean, the fact is that uh, uh, there is a lot of quantity of education in India yes. at the cost of quality. So many MBA school, schools are shut, shutting out, intakes are reducing, jobs are not available. Given that Indian job market the last couple of years has not been providing enough jobs. Mm -hmm. So job market is tight. So even if 100% people at a campus get a job, I think it's probably good news. Now maybe half of them or some part of them may be underemployed from their aspiration perspective. Yes. So again, one has to bring a realism to your aspirations, one's aspirations, and also look at uh, there are three or four fundamental things which help is to, what are the things which are in my circle of influence, which I can do? Instead of blaming everybody else about what is not working. Yes. Let me give you an example. Half the time in meetings when people are late and you ask them what happened, oh, traffic, this traffic, that traffic. You could have left earlier. You could have left earlier. I cannot do anything about the traffic. That's not yeah, in my circle, of, in, uh, circle of influence. Yes. What is in my circle of influence is the starting time from my house or the starting time from my office to a client's place. That is in my circle of influence. So people at times waste a lot of time, efforts, energy in talking about things which are outside their circle of influence. So get in touch with what is in my circle of influence and make those things happen. Other things will follow.
Okay, uh, sir, we wanted to know how would you like to stay connected with NDIM and its students? Uh, don't go by my grey hair, but <laughs> I had a very busy life, work life. Yes, sir, of course. At my age, I worked 12 to 13 hours a day. So I have to prioritize sometimes yes, things. Sir, yes, sir. But I was talking to the HR faculty and I said, Maybe a couple of times in a year I can come and take keynote sessions on some themes. It would be our to the large days. group, so maybe it's HR or whatever, but uh, we can identify the one or two themes and uh, keynote sessions for about yes, 90 minutes yes. or one hour to 90 minutes. Yes, sir, that would be great. Uh, and maybe we can see what are the relevant themes, uh, contemporary relevant themes. Yes, sir. Because every assignment we do, takes us back to drawing board. We do our own secondary research. We are a small company. We can't afford primary research. But we do a lot of secondary research to come back with innovative solutions. That's why we have very high customer satisfaction of our deliverables. And uh, I mean, people like me and my colleagues, we have no plans to retire. We keep on refiring ourselves because we love our work. So another thing is, if, if you love your work, you stop working. Exactly. You're playing all the time. Yes. Okay. And very few people get into their ideal jobs. <laughs> so better start loving the job you have. <laughs> okay, sir. On that Thank note, you so much. On that note, I hope... Uh, it so, means something to you. <laughs> sir, it meant a lot that you gave us your time and we learned a lot. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.